What was Australia like during the early Cretaceous? Many major animal groups had not yet migrated there, including frogs, turtles, and lizards. Crocodiles were rare, their niches taken by giant predatory amphibians that prowled the waterways. Flowering plants were just beginning to appear, meaning that the forest canopy was occupied by conifers. In this strange ecosystem, several species of herbivore dodged spinosaurs and megaraptors to find food. But one stands out. Leolinosaura amicographica had the longest tail-to-body length ratio of any dinosaur. This fascinating feature was why I decided to try to paint this little animal in its alien environment. Using the skeletal reconstruction of paleoartist Ashley Patch, as well as muscular supervision from artist and paleontology student Oliver Demuth, the final form of Leolinosaura became clear. While Leolinosaura itself is not known to have feathers, close relatives did, and cold winters in Australia at the time would have necessitated some fluff for this little herbivore. Soon enough, however, the main issue became the plants. The deeper I looked into the fossil plant literature, the more complicated it became. Of the month-long process of this painting, two of those weeks were devoted solely to plants. Finally, though, I had somewhat of a grasp on it, an undergrowth of ferns and ginkgo shrubs, while Arocarians, probably Wallamy and Norfolk Island Arocaria, and podocarp trees loomed behind. I then created a 3D digital model of the scene to use as a lighting reference, and completed a few color sketches based on that and a finished composition sketch. The one that caught my eye the most is when the light from the sunrise is in the process of illuminating the dinosaurs, so that's what I decided to go with. I then decided on how to paint it, which led to a pretty odd decision. When many artists, myself included, paint a scene, they use layers to create an underpainting working up detail as they go, like this acrylic painting. However, a technique used by some, and extensively by mural artists in museums, is called area-by-area area painting, and I'll link to a video of the famous paleoartist James Gurney using and explaining this technique. In brief, it involves painting section by section, so you go right for a finished look for each section, like a paint-by-numbers book. I wanted to try this, but also to challenge myself, so I turned off my eyedropper tool in Photoshop. This meant that I had to mix new colors manually, giving the painting a lot more color variation than one where I can sample based on what I've already painted. Using this technique, I finished the painting in about five days, and it's the most detailed and lifelike work I've painted yet. Painting this scene has given me a heightened respect for the complexity of these prehistoric forests and I hope that I can apply this respect to my paintings in the future.